Hello, my friends. How are you? I'm Dr. Sergio Ravinsky from Show the Planet here from the city of Sao Paulo in Brazil. And in this video, I'm presenting you a very difficult situation, which is the arthroscopic management of a Hegel lesion, humeral avulsion of the glenohumeral ligament. This is indeed a difficult surgery in which I am showing you tips and tricks in order to make this difficult procedure more feasible. So I hope you like the video. Please subscribe to the channel, leave your comment, and let's see the video. Shoulder anterior instability is a very common problem in, the, in every shoulder surgeon's office. And nowadays we all know that arthroscopic treatment is the gold standard way of fixing these lesions once there is no indication for a bony block procedure. The most common and quite standard lesion involved in these cases is the Bankart lesion, but some different types of lesion are already described in literature as the Alpsa lesion or even the Hegel lesion, what stands for humeral avulsion of the anterior glenohumeral ligament. Hagel lesions are quite uncommon and its treatment can be performed arthroscopically, but it is described in literature to be quite difficult. So this case is about a 35-year-old patient who is a triathlete and who had his first anterior shoulder dislocation about five years ago. After that, he stood for four years okay with no problems in his right shoulder swimming okay, but he had his second anterior shoulder dislocation about one year ago. After that, he had something like 20 new episodes, and he came to my office in August 2011. So this is his arterial MRI, and now we're seeing a coronal view in T2, in which we can clearly see a Hegel lesion in the humeral neck head region, and this is another image, still a T2 coronal view, revealing the Hegel lesion. This is another image, a T2 sagittal view, in which we can see no signs of any standard Bankart lesion. And in, in this image, an axial T2 cut, we can see that his anterior labrum seemed to be quite normal. And finally, this is another image, an axial T2 cut, again revealing a quite normal anterior labrum. So the patient was told that we would try to fix his Hegel lesion arthroscopically and if we found that it was not possible we would very fastly stop the arthroscopy and perform an open Bristol lethargy surgery. It's important to say that I only do my shoulder arthroscopies in the beach chair position but particularly in this case, we use it the lateral decubitus position. And anyway, this lesion was fixed arthroscopically, and so this is his arthroscopy. So this is his arthroscopy. This is a, you know, a right shoulder. So now we are seeing the heel sacs lesion that was really not very big in this case and the long head of the biceps that was pretty okay. Now we see in the upper border of the subs cap and now, this is the posterior part of the axillary recess in which we can see the posterior inferior glenohumeral ligament that was quite uh, inflamed. And, and here is the place in which we would find the Hegel lesion. So the first thing to do uh, was to establish a very standard and simple anterior portal. And we used uh, uh, a callagious to open the capsule in a very standard way, and then we enter it with a shaver just to debris all the inflammatory tissue and the synovitis in the axillary recess and in the region of the posterior inferior glenohumeral ligament. There was a, a lot of inflammatory tissue, especially because the, the patient dislocated his shoulder 15 days before that surgery. So we would have to remove all the synovitis, all the inflammatory tissue in the, in the axillary recess and we continue that with radio fr frequency device, removing all the synovitis you now and all the inflammatory tissue. 
Uh, this uh, now we can see that almost all the inflammatory tissue was quite reasonably removed, but we continued because we would uh, have to find Hegel lesion, and without all that inflammatory tissue, that would be probably much much easier. So then we would have to to establish a transsubscapularis portal, and this is quite difficult, but we we finally did it with a spinal needle. And then we enter it with a Visinger device and using the Visinger and putting some strength in our hands. Here we see in the upper border of the subscapularis. We could finally enter with a standard cannula. So now we, we can see that this is quite difficult because the subscapularis is a very strong tendon and a strong muscle, especially in such a strong man. And when the cannula was in place, we enter it through the anterior portal with a very delicate spatula, an osteotome, a very delicate one, to try to find the Hegel lesion. So here's the Hegel lesion. We have seen a torn ligament in, in its humeral ins insertion. And the, the, the delicate oste osteotome was almost entering through that rupture, that torn ligament. So once we found that lesion, the Hegel lesion, we continue to uh, debris the inflammatory tissue. And we would have to do it to have an, enough space to try to put an anchor. So we enter it first with a burr, but it was quite difficult as we are seeing now. And then we would try to find a place to put, to create a bony bed in which we would put our, our anchor. But we noticed that it was very hard to, to have a nice view with the camera in the posterior portal. It was some, sometimes very difficult to, to see the burr, so we changed the portals. Now the camera is, is in the anterior portal, and we put then the burr without a cannula because it was easier for us to debride and to, to move, and we started to create a bony bed in which we would put the first and probably the only anchor in the humerus. So now we are seeing the bony bed that we had just created, it was very reasonable and with the subchondral bone very nice uh, exposed. And then we enter it with a, a single 5.0 anchor, a, me a metallic one, and try to put that in the bony bed that we had just created. It was very difficult and we didn't have space so we put the camera back in the posterior portal and then it was reasonably easier for us to see the anchor and then uh, we would put the anchor in the bony bed that we had just created in the humerus and we used a hammer to very softly, very slowly to, 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 to make a small entrance for the anchor and then to screw it inside the bone, inside the humerus. Anyway, it was very difficult and it was very slippery. This is called the killer angle by Burkhart, but it was very difficult to find a, 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 a nice angle. It was very slippery, so as we, we, we tried to introduce the anchor with a hammer, it was really, really difficult, and every time we thought that the anchor was in place, it, it was it was slip again. And at that moment, so we decided to put through the transsubscapularis portal a puncture, and to create a, a, a hole using a, a hammer very softly, very slowly, in the same way we do in the greater tuberosity. So now we are using a hammer to put it inside the humerus. And once we created that hole in which we would insert the anchor, we enter again with the anchor. The camera is, is in the posterior portal, and the anchor is, is in the transsubscapularis portal with no cannula, but with a knee cannula because it was easier for us to manage. But we couldn't find the hole that we had just done, we had just created, and it was slippery uh, again in the same way. So we felt the hole, but when we tried to enter with that metallic anchor, the anchor was slippery. Uh, Again, so we changed the portals of the, the camera once more. Now the camera is in the anterior portal. We try to have a direct vision of the hole that we had just created. 
it was very difficult to see the, the literature says this is a, a very difficult part of the this, this surgery so we we enter it for the transubscapularis portal with a, uh, a soft tissue shaver to try to see the the hole that we had just done in the bony bed in the humerus and then finally with my hands almost in the patient's eyes i could finally introduce the anchor but uh, we we decided to check it so we put the, at that moment the camera back in the posterior portal when for the anterior portal we entered it with a probe just to to try to 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 feel with our hands if the anchor was in place that was difficult too so we entered for the anterior portal with a soft tissue shaver to remove all the cartilage of the humerus in order for us to see if the anchor had really entered in the humerus. Finally, we could see that the anchor was inside the humerus. We can see the black marking, so we remove it. And at that moment, we would have to isolate in the very standard fashion the sutures to try to fix the Hegel lesion. Then for the transsubscapularis -subscap portal, we enter it with a, a very simple suture passer and with a proline suture, a number two proline suture, and we would put one part of that proline suture out of the anterior portal. And it, in a retrograde fashion, we would put the first suture, the white one, passing through the Hegel lesion out of the transsubscapularis portal. And now both, both parts of the uh, white suture were outside the shoulder through the trans portal and then we would have to isolate that white suture in the anterior portal to tie the first knot so then we tied first knot a non, a non sliding knot in order to bring the anterior inferior ligament to the bony bed that we had just done just created in the humerus and after the knot was done then it would have to be cut then we would have to isolate the two parts of the blue suture in the anterior portal and at that moment they were isolated in the anterior portal and then we tried to see if the, the patient had a bankard lesion and for our surprise he really had in spite of having nothing in the actual MRI so at that moment we decided to unload that, that anchor in the humerus because it would be much better to fix that bankard lesion and then we, we would fix that bankard lesion in a very standard and simple fashion. So we enter it again with the, the, the delicate osteotome and we started to detach that reasonably large bankard lesion from the anterior inf inferior rim of the anterior glenoid in a very standard and simple fashion and we would have to fix it in a standard fashion too so once we had detached it we entered with a shaver just to to create a bony bed a bleeding base in the anterior inferior part of the glenoid and especially including the anterior superior part of the glenoid too and after that we enter it with one anchor in something like the three or the four o'clock position and we would put a standard 2.9 absorbable double loaded anchor so now the anchor is being put and once the anchor was in, pl in place we enter we decided to create a new port because we are using to fix our standard bank cards with two anterior portal portals and then we, we would have to isolate the sutures in a very standard fashion not to make a mess with them and then we enter it with a bird beak through the anterior portal and we pull, we pull it the first blue suture passing through the bankard lesion and before tying that one we would do the same thing and put, put in the white suture passing through the bankard lesion and out of the, the shoulder so then we would have to tie the knots so we, f we first tied the blue one, put in a, a lot of compression in the bankard lesion. And once the knot was done, it would have to be cut. Then we would have to tie 
the second one and, and and after that we we just would have to cut it and then we palpated our const construction it was very stable with a single anchor and the labor was very nicely fixed to the interior glenoid and we wouldn't have to do to put a, another anchor then we tested the biceps and it was very okay with no signs of slap and the, the the tension of the humeral ligament was very nice and at that moment the surgery was finished so my friends i hope you like it the video don't forget subscribe in the channel leave your comment and we keep on talking show the planet never stop flying i'm dr sergio from brazil Thank you.